interpreting. So now you get to choose wisely your words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You are on camera. <laughs> it's shocking okay. how many people forget that when they're on Zoom. We've yeah. had some, um, yeah. we've had some comedic <laughs> things happen for sure in our <laughs> staff <laughs> meetings. We're like, we, we in the meeting. We're like, can you believe what they did? <laughs> oh right, yeah. <laughs> so welcome to our Oaks monthly meeting, and uh, we're just so excited to continue to see our group growing. Currently at 102 members on our Facebook page, so we're very excited about that. Yay! And uh, we don't yeah. really have a full head count yet, um, obviously, of who has, um, how many people have joined us today, because like Amy said, we get people who straggle in. Um, but A little note of how many people were able to join us today. And so just a reminder to please continue to get the word out to your family and friends and um, invite them to our meetings and also, you know, put the invite out on Facebook, you know, share the meeting recording on Facebook and just continue to try to get the word out about our Oaks group. And a reminder of our mission and vision as a, as a networking group is um, to proactively serve and educate each other in pursuit of synergistic solutions for seniors. Also a shared vision to create a unified senior resource team to support each other and the seniors we serve. And then our values are to maintain integrity and have synergy and service and collaboration amongst one another. So very excited again to be with you all today. And we wanted to make a little announcement and I think I'll also make the announcement again at the end of the meeting, Amy, just in case there's anybody who, you know, wasn't able to be on board with our Zoom call at the beginning. But we are going to have our first live and in-person Oaks meeting in August at Noble Hospice. And so, um, you know, we'll make that announcement again at the end of the meeting and maybe we can... Um, find out, um, you know, with the group, um, how they're feeling about starting to have the persons in meeting uh, in person, meetings in person, Let's put that out. Um, and we would like to, you know, go to that as our format moving forward 100% of the time. Um, so we'll kind of take a little team, uh, team boat, a group boat and see how everybody's feeling about all that, okay? So um, today we have presenting to us, is it Dr. Roget? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Roger. 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 Yeah. You, are you yeah. French? No, no. Somebody <laughs> uh, changed the name from some kind of a Norwegian type spelling and uh, uh, changed the uh, spelling. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, right. Dr. But Roget, you're going um, one of those little things over the top of your teeth. An accent? Um, yes. <laughs> for quite a while I did, and then uh, my brother learned, my older brother learned French, and he said, well, actually, you don't need that accent, so we dropped it. Okay, <laughs> okay, well, it's yeah, helping no people like myself. Who are <laughs> okay, yeah, You don't I want see. to murder your last name. Well, that's true, that's all right. So Dr. Roger, he's going to be teaching yeah. us today about guidelines for inpatient rehabilitation care, and he will be going sure. over the services that Encompass Health offers as well as how they can help seniors in our community keep their independence, okay? So we're gonna turn our meeting over to you for your presentation. Okay, thank you, and thanks for the invitation. So uh, again, Dr. Vance Roger, my specialty is physical medicine rehabilitation, and I'm re representing Encompass Health Rehab Hospital in Modesto. Um, a little talk uh, has to start with uh, why and what we do. In other words, um, when someone has an acute medical condition, they go to an acute hospital. So that their goal is to stabilize their condition or to treat um, in order to allow healing and recovery. So after they're stabilized and we sort of pick up the pieces, they refer uh, patients to us and um, we do uh, acute rehabilitation. And so that, that goal is to help regain function and quality of life. And that, that's a good term, quality of life. Um, <clears throat> We, uh, being acute rehabilitation, we um, treat often the, the complications of a significantly involved problem, whether it's uh, various issues that affect their function, um, stroke, causing hemiparesis, and various other uh, problems that go along with it, 
Um, there could be multiple trauma, multiple fractures. There could be traumatic brain injury, which also involves more than just uh, you know, bump in the head, it, it involves a lot of times some paralysis and cognitive uh, problems. So we, we deal with all those things. <clears throat> so these are impairments or deficits that, that interfere with function, meaning disability. And so we take a multidisciplinary approach. We have a coordinated care, including nurses and, and doctors. Um, the doctors, uh, you know, need to see the patients um, every day, really. And that, that is completely different than a skilled nursing facility, for example, to where the doctor, the requirement is to come and see the patient within 48 hours of admission, and then once a month, sometimes more if needed, but uh, they really don't get that much uh, involvement and they don't get the intensity and frequency of the, the therapies either. <clears throat> so um, we have, I mentioned coordinated care, uh, we also have uh, dietitians and, and others that, that help with nutrition. We meet every week uh, for uh, um, interdisciplinary team conference or patient care conference to where we talk about uh, what the patient's needs are, how else we can do to help them in, in various ways and, and what's their progress and gearing them towards um, uh, getting them home. So. Um, the, the goals, of course, are to re return the patients to the highest level possible of, of function um, and especially to home. We, we get over 90% of our patients to home. And, and I think that's a, a major goal of theirs, of the patients and families. Uh, but it's also our goal because that's, that's a pretty good uh, success right there. Uh, so we, once we get them to home, we, we help with that transition also. I mentioned that. We do, um, the, the therapists uh, will do uh, family training with the patients. Uh, the, the nurses will make sure that they understand uh, management of their medications. Um, and um, we often then hand off the, the rehab once they go home to home health care. Home health care agencies will have as much as PTOT speech and a nurse. The, the nurse helps. Um, set up and um, sort of monitor uh, the uh, continuation of that interdisciplinary approach. Um, it's important to have that transition because when they go home, um, it can be psychologically very difficult. I mean, they were last time they were home, everything was great. They were moving around just fine. And when they go home after their, their big problem, they get hit pretty hard with reality. And so that transition is, is very important to set that up. And so that's why we have uh, first as much as possible having the therapies at home. And then a lot of times later, they'll transition to outpatient therapies for, for a little more um, intensity uh, a lot of times. Uh, the home uh, setup uh, arrangement is to help with safety also. The, the big issue is prevention of falls, for example. And um, I, I often, before the, our, my patients go home, I'll, I'll talk to them about, I um, uh, need to take kind of a new look at things, you know, look and, and see what might be a fall risk. There might be rugs that, that are bunched up or, or um, throw rugs that are sliding on the bottom. Uh, there might be uh, a coffee table with sharp corners that they had no problems going around before, but it kind of feels like they jump out and bite you. Uh, you know, when you're uh, not as mobile and uh, another risk of falls. And then also they might have pets at home. They might have a dog or a cat that will sort of sneak up behind them and then they turn around and they fall over them when they're not really looking. Uh, sometimes stroke patients will also have um, perceptual deficits to where, especially if it's a right brain uh, injury problem, uh, it affects left-sided neglect where they're, they're not paying attention to their left side as much. Uh, and there are various other cognitive uh, deficits that go on with, with motor planning, planning ahead, uh, and, um, you know, doing all they can to, to be safe. <clears throat> so I think those are some of the, the main things that the difference between acute hospital, the difference between skilled nursing facilities is important to, to know. Um, and we see people a lot of times, um, Somebody might think, well, a patient just had a hip fracture. They fell and, and fractured their hip, and then the orthopedist will, will fix their hip, and they ought to be able to go home. But that's not always the, the best scenario, because if it affects their mobility, 
um, they uh, could be unsafe and it can affect lots of things, what we call mobility related activities of daily living. There, there are a lot of things where you need the mobility. And so um, it, it can be more than just a hip problem. It can be an overall mobility and an overall function problem. And so we take all that into consideration. And we even see some patients a lot of times where they get referred from a home health care agency who, where the patient did go from this, the uh, acute rehab, the, excuse me, the acute hospital to home, and they're just not doing that well at home. Uh, things are, are a risk. Uh, they're not thriving. They're, they're just not doing very well. And so we can get some referrals from home health care agencies. We also get referrals from doctor's offices, sometimes even when they really don't need uh, a prolonged acute hospital stay, we can get referrals from emergency rooms. And so when they know the, the main issue is going to be rehabilitation and function, we can get them directly from um, emergency rooms also. So any, any questions, any uh, issues, any stories that, <laughs> that you can uh, propose to me to elaborate on or something? I have a comment and a question, if possible. Sure. Um, yeah. I was fortunate enough, Lisa arranged for me to have a tour of your facility, well, not oh, the yeah. facility, um, a couple weeks ago, and, and I was, just to, to put it out there to everyone, I was totally impressed. It's really, really all about rehab. Um, so really, really impressed. And I know you're having a car show coming up. <laughs> um, but yeah, Lizzie, like you. Lizzie had told me that one of the things that you guys can do, and maybe you can clarify my understanding, is um, I, I work for an in-home care company. Um, mm -hmm. And she said a lot of times, or one of the things you could do is, you know, someone, their meds get changed, they get dizzy they're, until they stable out, they're kind of a fall risk. And, and are you able to take those folks on for a week or so? to get them stabilized um, and then back yes, to Yes, yeah, I did, yeah, right. I did mention that we do get um, referrals from uh, home health care agencies and, and other uh, doctor's offices. Uh, a lot of times um, the doctor will say, well, they're, they need a little more uh, dynamic tune-up, I suppose, of, of their medical problems also. Uh, so yes, we, we can get uh, referrals and, um, you know, even if it, if it's a, potentially no uh, decision, you know, um, you know, give a call over to uh, Lisa and, and the others and, and, and we'll see what we, uh, if it's something that we can help. Yeah. Yeah, and, and thanks for the comment about the uh, facility. Uh, it is uh, impressive. Um, we have um, lots of room in the gym. We have lots of different types of um, therapy training tools. Um, another good selling point is that all rooms are single occupant rooms. They don't have to share a room with somebody who's going to snore or yell or, or whatever. You know, they have their own room. Um, in the same room, there's uh, the, the bathroom, their own private bathroom. Uh, and so it's, it's kind of like home. Not quite like home, but <laughs> the best next thing. I did have a, a question as well. So yeah. how acute can the patient be? I mean, can you have somebody on a trach there? I mean, what, what are the, are there limitations as to how acute the patient can be before they can go there? Sure. Right. Yeah. We do not have patients with tracheostomies. So we don't have on-site um, continuous respiratory therapy. We do have nurses who do respiratory treatments and, and respiratory therapy, but not to the extent of having to have a pulmonologist to monitor uh, their um, respiratory problems uh, and you know the deep suctioning that a lot of times they need, you know things like that. So that that level of care is called long-term acute care. And I was previously at a facility in town here called um, Central Valley Specialty Hospital, where they, that's where they they start, and we get some referrals from them uh, also. So yeah, okay. Uh, we do have on-site in-house dialysis if needed. And so we have um, uh, uh, you know, a physician who comes over um, and, and works with them uh, and they, they bring their um, dialysis uh, nurse then also. 
So, okay. so that's a good. That's, that's good, good to know. Point All right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Must have other questions. Other questions. What about um, patients with diabetic that are diabetic that have diabetic needs? I'm I'm not diabetic, but I know there's you know a lot of times they have special special needs with a pump and such. Do you yeah. are you guys able to take care of that? Yeah, we have had some patients who have a um, the insulin pump. Um, they uh, we want them to be as independent as possible in working the pump, but uh, until they are, we can we can work with that. Um, so we still need to be doing, um, of course, the finger stick blood sugar checks uh, and managing that. Um, sometimes we will have them turn off the pump until we get them more stabilized, uh, and then they can be getting back on it. But uh, uh, so that that would not be an exclusion. We have patients with wounds also. We have a wound care specialist uh, who works with these patients. Sometimes it's a big enough wound um, that and complicated enough that they need to have what's called a VAC. Uh, it's a suction device that, that is um, helping with granulation tissue, helping with decreasing the drainage from the wound. Uh, and so we, we do that also. We do, we do see spinal cord injury patients. We don't see patients um, who are very high quadriplegic. In other words, uh, if they really need lots of technology um, for managing their environment, we don't have quite the setup for that. But we do, we have had quadriplegic patients uh, and have one right now that we've been working with. And um, we can, uh, connect with, uh, ha have a um, power wheelchair vendor come over and get that started. We have a power wheelchair um, that we can get as a loaner to train them on it, but we want to get them to, to have their own. Um, and often that means very specialized, they're expensive also, uh, power wheelchairs that will, will tilt and recline because they need to be able to decrease pressure on their, their butt and their back end, their, their back, uh, because if they don't have the, the arm strength to be able to shift their weight enough, uh, that could definitely cause a decubitus ulcer. So there's some training involved with that that we can manage here too. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so you guys have a wound care specialist. Do you have a wound care doctor so you can do on-site debridements? Yes, right. Our wound care uh, specialist um, uh, is certified for doing debridements. I am also actually, you know, right. I've done uh, since I did my internship in general surgery, uh, but also even in my, my rehab residency, um, it, which I did in, in Dallas, it was a regional burn center. And we had combination, any burn patients we were com in, uh, following in combination with the Department of Surgery uh, because you know they needed uh, wound care, which we did a lot of, I did a lot there, uh, and they need various braces to prevent contractures. So uh, yeah, I'm involved with that too. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, we actually, I work at Elk Grove Park and we're assisted living and memory care. Um, yeah. And one of our residents actually goes to you guys because you have on-site dialysis um, yeah. and he has nothing but good to say. So thank you very much for all your service. Good. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Good. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, uh, so sometimes people will have peritoneal dialysis that they've been doing at home. Um, we've had some patients where we'll continue the peritoneal dialysis here, but on the other hand, usually when they go to the acute hospital first, they'll convert them over to hemodialysis and we'll continue that. And then, then they can be converted back to the um, peritoneal dialysis when they go home. Okay, other questions? I just had a question. We've got, we've sure. got 
Tim, who's an expert in home safety and in retrofitting um, things for um, individuals who need that extra help in their home. And I guess I just was curious if you could maybe elaborate on, on some of the things that patients are doing in their home, kind of maybe um, like above and beyond removing objects, but are there certain things that you're seeing a patient's doing in their home, uh, retrofitting with safety um, items or things that um, you have seen done to make that transition back home more safe? Sure, well, we always ask to see how many steps do they have to get in and out of the home. And so if we can train them for going up and down steps, then that's great, but sometimes they're not good enough and they need a ramp. So uh, we'll, we'll identify that uh, soon enough uh, so the family can be working on that. Um, also, we have the patients take pictures or the family to take pictures of their home environment and see you know, what sort of things might be an issue. Usually it's bathroom, shower, uh, and we can we simulate all those things here. We have simulated showers in addition to their own showers. Uh, and uh, so that's the other thing is uh, grab bars when needed. And sometimes they'll need a bedside commode or a tub transfer bench um, to make things safer. So we, we try to identify all those things uh, as early as possible. Uh, and so especially if we can't quite train them to that higher level that they would need for what's at home, then we can um, arrange for equipment to go home. Uh, and that, that works out real well. Yeah, they also, uh, the therapists will do um, safety um, uh, counseling. They'll, they'll have these pictures to say, is this, what's unsafe about this environment? You know, and they'll, they'll do a kind of a quiz and, and talk to them about all those things. <clears throat> Another patient group I didn't, uh, I kind of neglected to mention is we get a lot of amputees, a fair, fair number. And so even if um, sometimes we've, we've had to sort of convince, or even the, the prosthetics people will have to convince some of the orthopedists to say, well, you know, it's just a below knee amputation, it'll be fine. Well, that's not um, necessarily a given. Um, a lot of times they need uh, uh, instructions on how to care for their residual limb or stump, we call it. Uh, and so we'll start with the wrapping, we'll get them to a shrinker and get them prepared to where they can have a prosthesis later. So you don't just let it swell up and, you know, possibly the wound will not heal well. Uh, we go through all those, um, uh, help them through all those transitions of healing uh, making sure it's healed well enough that the swelling goes down, make sure they don't get a, a, a joint contracture uh, of uh, where, you know, on that same limb. Uh, and then all the mobility issues. So even such simple things as um, they will have phantom sensation. And when they're in bed, they think, oh, they can just get out of bed and put both feet on the floor. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have both feet. And so, <laughs> you know, that's something that they'll, uh, they'll, they'll need some supervision and awareness of, um, and it takes some training to, to get used to that a lot of times. So, yeah, and then all the other strengthening, you know, they might not have been, uh, if they're diabetic and maybe uh, obese and had lots of other problems and mobility was kind of marginal to start with, and now they have one less limb, uh, we need to do some training to, to improve their function um, and prepare them as much as possible. Hey, Amy, this is Tim with Home Safety Services. I just want to say that I have been uh, in Encompass uh, facility uh, since it opened and the uh, social services discharge people and the rehab people are all, um, have all been in service on our services and they're, and they're very encouraged about you know, supplying the patients with in-home falls prevention. So they're all up to speed and it's a great facility, uh, doctor. I really uh, think that you guys do a great job there. Great, good, thank I'm, you. I'm gonna mute, I have a garbage truck coming through here. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> okay, all good questions, what else? Family concerns, do you, do you hear any other concerns about um, the whole rehab process? So you deal a lot with um, elderly uh, people also. Uh, and so kind of what I was saying is um, they're, um, 
living and function might be kind of uh, precarious and then some little thing happens and uh, their whole world is a little different. And so that's why I said a lot of times we'll get referrals from home health care agencies or primary care doctors, sometimes even just from families. And so our um, nurse liaisons will do um, an on the phone evaluation of what are the problems, what might we be able to do to help them. And we don't accept everyone, but you know, we, we see if there's something that they need that multi multidisciplinary approach, uh, then we'll see about admission and then they, they create a, um, uh, a screen that we, uh, one of, uh, myself or one of the other doctors, will we'll do um, um, check the pre-screen and see if they're a good candidate to come into our, our rehab facility. Very nice. Thank you, Dr. Roger. Question okay. I have is, is this something that can be covered by somebody's health insurance or is it out of pocket cost for them? Yes, I mean, most insurances will have um, some amount of coverage, um, you know, for the rehab portion. And so um, I'm not the expert on, mm -hmm. <laughs> on that, but our nurse liaisons also uh, check into that. We need to see gotcha. what's covered and how much their share of costs might be and, and get that back with the family. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, we get that all figured out ahead of time. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate your presentation today. And, and again, it's sure. just really great to be made aware of services that are available to, you know, seniors in our community and obviously to our own families and friends, right? So thank you for your presentation sure. today. I have one quick question for Dr. Roger. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you yeah, do yeah. maybe kind of like a preventative type thing? If like we can see a family member who is starting to show some decrease in, in mobility, you know, not that they've had, you know, something acute happen or an accident or anything, but just that idea of like helping them to prevent falls or helping them to continue mobility um, where they are, are getting um, older and, and kind of losing it. Yes, uh, that's true. And the same sort of um, idea applies is that in the pre-screen, they'll, they'll pick up uh, a lot of that information. Um, if there is a big fall risk, if maybe there's um, there's a decline in function that might be due to a medical cause that we can all uh, target and, and work on. Uh, and so, uh, you know, they, they still need to have that kind of multidisciplinary approach, but that often is, is not too hard to get that worked out. You know, PTOT, uh, whether they need speech therapy or not. Um, so, and, and the, the nursing, the, the skilled nursing approach and uh, medical coverage. So um, with that, that combined interdisciplinary approach, um, a lot of times is, is needed with their significant decline in function. So, um, and it, it could be even a nutritional sort of thing also. We work with that too uh, and, and put it all together. So, yeah. I have one last question. Sure. I'm gonna kind of piggyback off Joyce, if I may. Um, yeah. So I know that during the wonderful world of COVID that the three-day stay, qualifying stay was removed from my uh, experience during skilled in, in that world. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if the three-day qualifying stay for Medicare patients specifically not covered by a HMO, um, if that has been removed or if that is, has gone back into effect. Hmm. I don't know. Lisa, you want to so comment on that? For us, for Encompass Acute Rehab, we do not have to have the three to, uh, three midnight qualifier stay ever because oh, we're licenses in acute. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, that's true. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, again, thank you. Yeah, well, that, and that's, that's why I mentioned that. Yeah, that's why I mentioned we can get patients from, from home or even from the emergency room. So, yeah, right. Wonderful. Yeah, I was thinking maybe there's something else that was in the question. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So we had um, eight people join us today outside of our presenter. So we mm -hmm. had a, a nice little turnout today. And so for those of you that logged on to our meeting um, a little after we started, we were making an announcement that our um, Oaks networking group 
has been invited to have our first in-person meeting in August at Noble Hospice. So what we wanted to do was um, put that in front of everybody that's here at the meeting today and just kind of get a head count of those of you that uh, feel confident and comfortable to go ahead and have an in-person meeting and um, wanted to kind of also get a consensus on moving forward that that's how we'll start meeting after the August meeting at Nobel Hospice. We'll start planning for meetings in person at different locations here around the community. I know, Amy, we usually take um, November, December off or just December? I can't remember. November and December because we meet the fourth Thursday of the month that typically hits Thanksgiving. Both those holidays. Okay. Yeah. So we would have an August in-person meeting and then a September, October. Then we would take our hiatus through the holidays and then resume in January. So I'm saying yes. I want to see everybody in person. <laughs> so... <laughs> So like we we see Lisa says yes too back there. <laughs> yes, yes. So wonderful. So Amy will send an announcement out to the group via email, and then we'll also make sure to get it posted on our Facebook. And I'm really hopeful that that will help our group start to grow exponentially as we're able to meet in person. So really, really excited. Um, so next month, correct, Amy, is our last Zoom meeting right so we'll make the announcement again so that everybody can know about it and of course like I said she'll put everything out via email and so that kind of leads us into the um, suggestions that we're always looking for for um, you know places and resources we want to all be putting on our thinking caps now that we can start reaching out to different locations and venues to have our meetings at so make sure to send over suggestions for um, you know, opportunities and speakers and themes. Um, and, you know, we can be creative. We can get outside the box. We don't have to stay in the same box. So, you know, if anybody's got a creative idea, throw it out there. We're, we're receptive to creativity. <laughs> if we could go have a little um, um, training over there at Encompass Health, we can check out your gym and maybe do a little like uh, yoga class. Or yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll keep in touch about that. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, and so um, we do have a little extra time today. Amy, do you want to do a little round robin and give everybody an opportunity to kind of introduce themselves, their services, and make any announcements? Yes, um, we are looking at for um, our next meeting. I had reached out to Second Harvest about presenting, but I haven't um, been able to get back um, any information from them for to confirming for July. So as of right this moment, July's meeting is open and available if anybody has a suggestion of someone or if you have something you would like to present to the group. Um, we are open for our July 22nd meeting, which is a Zoom meeting. Um, but also, yes, if there are locations around the county that you guys know of that would be open to having visitors, um, to having one of our meetings there, then um, just a reminder, it's that fourth Thursday of the month um, that we meet. So for um, September, October, if one of those would work out for your organization, we'd love to. And also love to hear what everybody's up to. Yeah, do our round robin and um, make sure everybody has a chance to share. And my apologies that um, last time we were on our Zoom meeting, I realized I have this little four squares on the side when I have the presenter view. And I didn't realize you scroll down and there was half a dozen people who were attending and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> I thought we had a small group. And so my apologies, we did check in with everybody at the end of the meeting and, and give you that opportunity last time. Hi, Amy, it's Crystal. <laughs> um, I'm here in Oakdale, and I just got off a wonderful meeting with Cheryl down there. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. Um, I have something to input real quickly. I will be um, with Second Harvest on Friday doing a food distribution. So maybe I can put a little pin in the hat to see. Wonderful. Can... Yeah, if they have somebody there who can do that presentation, we'd love to have them next month. Okay, good. I just wanted to throw that out there. All right. And then, Amy, do you want to go ahead and introduce everybody who's with us today and give them an opportunity to share their services and any announcements? Oh. Yeah, I'm mute, Amy. Thank you, Cheryl. Let's start with Cheryl because she's already unmuted. <laughs> 
Let's go with you know, Cheryl and I'll go down my little tile. <laughs> I, you, know, you know, I always have something to say, you know, um, and sorry about the lateness. I am, you know, Crystal and I were in deep in um, conversation and um, you guys actually entered into the conversation. So all good. Um, I am Cheryl Schrock. I'm the Alzheimer's Association. I'm the Modesto Walk to End Alzheimer's and it is 100% walk season. Um, Modesto, yay, every, you know, I've got a couple of you on my list because I've got some cool opportunities, fun opportunities for Girl Scouts, Amy Badger, <laughs> that I, I want to put forth. But um, first of all, um, in Modesto Walk is coming up. It's in Grisada Park. We're in person. We're excited. All the plans are in place. I want to put my hats off to um, Lisa Clausen and Encompass Health, one of our national teams. Um, they've signed up and hopefully are ready to go. Thank you so much. I'm Cindy Starziak with Visiting Angels. She is an angel on earth, such an amazing um, gal. And I see my Amanda down in the corner. I haven't seen her in a while. Hi, Amanda. She's a great addition. Thank you to everybody for your support, but we still need more. Um, Modesto is not there yet. Um, we, you know, anybody, if you know of anybody, we're looking for teams, we're looking for sponsors, um, we're looking for all that kind of good stuff. Um, um, the Modesto Walk is about the community. Alzheimer's is the third leading cause of death in the state of California. Everybody knows somebody who's had issues with it, and we need to take action as a community to do something about it. Uh, we need the services, we need the education, and as Crystal and I had talked earlier, we need the awareness. And I'm only one person. I've got some great volunteers, but we need your help as far as spreading the word and doing things. And um, for all of you who have been a part of that already, I am forever um, grateful to you and appreciate you all. This group is amazing. Um, we're only going to get bigger and better as we're able to go in person. I just hope that I, you know, I mark, I'll mark it on my calendar ahead of time to try to keep it open. But um, thank you so much for all the support and the people I've known through the years and what you've been able to do. Um, Modesto has huge potential and it's because of you guys and hopefully with your help going forward that we can make Modesto and make this community what it needs to be. Appreciate you all. Um, um, go to alz.org forward slash Modesto 2021. And you can always ask me for any questions or thoughts and um, a lot of opportunities there, guys. Let's, let's make it happen. We got it. We've got this. Do you have a date, Cheryl, for the Modesto walk already? September 18th. September 18th. All right. Grisada Park and um, all the AD, the, the guidelines uh, um, are in place. We know exactly what we're going to do, what we're going to look like. We, it's going to be semi a hybrid. If people aren't totally comfortable, don't want to come out yet, there's a, a hybrid way that they can watch us. But we're going ahead in person doing what we need to do and giving the support and love to those folks. And um, we're excited. Wonderful. We're very excited. And do you have a Stockton location? There was a question if that was going to be a Rose Garden in Stockton. Who is saying that already at University Park? <laughs> <laughs> We're, um, we're in negotiations um, for Stockton. Stock Stockton is October 16th. Um, Stockton is the jewel of um, San Joaquin County, and um, they are nationally ranked as a walk last year. Come on, Modesto, you can do it as well. But um, we're in negotiations for our location because they have been very, nobody has been open to, you know, to get that, you know, in place because of governmental things and it's just now opening up. We thought we were gonna be at UOP, but the timing is not gonna work out and we're not willing to um, change our date. So we are looking at um, the Rose Garden at University Park. I was in negotiations with them yesterday. Um, St. Joe's is right across the street. Wellbe Health is right there. And um, we're crossing our fingers. It's a beautiful, beautiful area and the parking and everything is, um, is really workable and um, we've got all the things that we need and we'll just hopefully be able to tie it up here in the next couple of weeks but yes that's a was that you cindy asking about <laughs> she was asking about um the rose garden but um there we go amanda yes amanda oh amanda <laughs> i'll let you know my friend <laughs> but stockton will be amazing this is about Modesto. 
Yes. Amanda, why don't you go ahead and share? Hello, my name's Amanda. I am from Elk Grove Park. Um, I have been primarily in the San Joaquin County and Stanislaw County for uh, the past two years. Um, so I've kind of ventured off into Elk Grove, but I still want to keep in contact with my people. So um, just seeing what's new and coming, sharing information. Uh, we offer assisted living and memory care options here. Thank you, Amanda. And Tim, just let us know that he's needing to check off. If you're still there for a second, Tim, um, before you take off. Oh, he's gone. He was saying goodbye to everybody. He needed to leave. But um, just a reminder from him that they are looking for installers throughout the valley. So if you guys know anybody who um, knows uh, about installation can help with all those retrofittings that they do for seniors, he would love to hear from them. Okay, Crystal, do you want to go ahead and share everybody a little about you and what you're up to? Well, hello everybody. I'm Crystal. I'm in Oakdale and I am about to graduate with my AS degree in human development and family sources, specializing in aging. Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. August 18th, I think, is when I graduate, which will be fun. Um, I'm really passionate about the Alzheimer's Association and I've got a connection with Cheryl that I'm excited about. So, um, we'll see, maybe see some things going forward and I uh, enjoy um, volunteering at, like on Friday I'm looking forward to food distribution here in Oakdale and that's going to be at the St. Mary's Church uh, through and Second Harvest is uh, distributing food through St. Mary's. That's, that's about me. What time is that going to be on Friday? Nine to ten. Got it. Yeah, and they have a wide selection of food. A huge semi truck comes in and we open up both sides and then there's volunteers on either side distributing food around the truck. And there is um, social distancing that is in place for that. And is there an age limit or is it like only adults that can assist with that? Can younger people help out with that? Yes. Okay, like you had Girl Scouts or somebody that wanted to come help. Correct. Got it. That actually happened in the last event. Wonderful, wonderful. We're excited to hear that. We'd love the community doing wonderful things like that to see um, hearts in action, making things happen. Yes. That's awesome. Thank you, Crystal. All right, Cindy, do you want to share with us about visiting angels and what you guys are up to? Doing the same old stuff, just helping people as much as we can. Um, you know, we, we're an in-home care company. Uh, we also, well, I've met with a lot of you. <laughs> And I'm all for in-person meetings. Um, and I'm glad to hear that Modesto Walk has a site. <laughs> Cheryl knows I'm always asking, do we have a site yet? Do we have a site yet? <laughs> um, but we're just, we're here. We're still just, you know, here helping, helping the community. We're in San Joaquin and Stanislaus. Um, any, well, we primarily have seniors, but any people that may need long-term or short-term assistance in the home to help them, uh, maintain independence in their home. We also uh, have, are helping a number of facilities when they need staffing assistance. Staffing for all of us, I think this year, especially right now, it's been a big challenge. Um, and I've learned it's not just like at the home care aid, it's like across industry, nurses, every, everyone I talk to, every place I go says, oh, and we have an open position for this if you know anyone. <laughs> Yeah, we all have open positions. <laughs> so um, anyone I know that, that's looking for something, I'm like, yeah, I can name off like five different places that are looking for someone. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but we're, we're here, we're here just to, we're still, you know, been here forever. We're here to help anyone that, that we can. Thank you so much, Cindy. So appreciate that. All right, Anna. You want to give us a little heads up about what you are up to and how we can help you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, Anna Felix, I'm in the Turlock area and kind of in a different industry than all of you, but really able to help out in a, in a very particular way. So, I'm a smart money strategist. So, I help people plan so that they can pay for all of these types of services that we're talking about. 
later on in life. And crazy enough, we have to do that long before we actually have the situation. And so um, it's important to have those type of things in place. Sometimes we, we don't have the opportunity to have it all in place and I can still help move and, and, and do things with funds that they have and put them in other things that will give them things like writers that pay for, um, you know, if, you, if you're, there's a list that the insurance companies go from, if, if there's six activities that you cannot engage in, if there's two of them, of those six that you're affected by, then you can qualify for certain coverages under certain types of plans. And so um, those are all the things that I can help with. Um, so that's, that's how I fit in and um, definitely interested in, in helping the senior community with just their finances in general. They tend to be targets for, for many that are out there to not do good for them. And so um, it's nice to, I do free consultations. So someone can just call and say, Hey, does this sound right? Like, is this really a thing? Um, I, I'm always happy to do that um, in the, in the effort of, you know, serving the community and, and helping make sure that they stay safe, you know, on the financial side. Wonderful. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, everybody who shared today. Did we get everybody, Amy? Um, Lisa, did you want to share anything? I mean, I know you guys were presenting over there in Compass, but is there anything maybe upcoming? I know you mentioned a car show. Do you want to share some details? Sure. So on July 10th, from 8 till noon, we're having a um, classic car show. Um, if you have a car and you want to bring it, you're more than welcome to bring it. Um, we have some past patients that are bringing their cars. We have a couple of car clubs that are going to be here. Um, we're going to be doing uh, root beer floats. We also are going to have face painting for kids, and we have quite a few vendors, um, food vendors coming. And so it's just going to be some fun. And if anybody wants to tour the hospital, we'll be giving tours too. Wonderful. Wonderful. If you wouldn't mind emailing that um, information over to me, Lisa, I will blast that out to the group and put yeah. it on Facebook as well. And yeah, Cheryl, sure. if you don't mind sending me a little email with the um, Modesto walk, I, can, I will put that out as well. Okay. Wonderful. So next month, our last Zoom meeting will be July 22nd. And as we move forward, I really want to share my personal vision with everyone here today for our networking group. And that is to really have an opportunity not only to network amongst ourselves, but to get our messaging out to the general public. And so we really want to be thinking about inviting, you know, either adult children who have, you know, a senior parent or seniors in general. And I know that as we get into these different locations, maybe there'll be an opportunity to invite the residents of these locations into our meetings. And I know that I'm going to be spending time with Amy brainstorming on ways that we can get the word out, you know, are we going to put ads in the newspaper? Because we know that, you know, seniors read the newspaper and, and like, you know, make an announcement these, these meetings exist and, you know, get the word out that there's an opportunity to find out about services that are available because I guarantee you most seniors and their adult children do not know that all these amazing services exist. And that really is my passion for having created this group because there are other networking groups available where it's really just kind of vendor to vendor and i really want to make this something that's a service to our community so you know just really i hope um you know everybody who's joining us and either here today or you know in any of our other meetings i hope that they can share in that vision with us and um, really just be thinking about how they can grow our awareness. And so if you have ideas in that area, we'd love you know, for you to share those ideas with us of ways we can really continue to get the word out. We'll have to rent a hall someday, right? <laughs> but we want people to know that our, that our networking group provides really valuable information and opportunity to stay informed. So that's it, I'm off my, my uh, soapbox. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Cheryl, did you have something you wanted to say to wrap up? I just want to make a comment. I think people are really, I think you're going to be surprised at how this group is going to blossom. Right now, everybody's still getting their footing with this COVID stuff, and people are really in flux, and some can meet, some can't. There's, you know, different things going on. People aren't exactly sure how 
things are going to look going forward and stuff. So I think you're going to be surprised at how big this group is going to be once everything settles down. Because a lot of us are still just trying to find our way and get our footing after what has been a really interesting year. And um, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised at how, you know, the depth that we'll have as soon as things kind of settle down more. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as long as we all share the same vision and, you know, we are all moving in the same direction, I think you're absolutely right, Cheryl. I think that it's going to turn into something really incredible. So looking forward to that. Thank you all so much for your time today. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for spreading the word and thank you for um, being such an asset to our community. Each one of you that is here does something that is so crucial and important um, for our communities. And we just want to thank you so much for doing what you do and sharing your light, your knowledge and the things that you do with the rest of us. So, and we will push it out to the community and help them see it as well. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Joyce, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Do you have a, a database that you're keeping for all the different vendors that you've had on, on the yes. meeting list? Okay, yes, that's good. We, we do. Yeah. Yes. So is that accessible by all of us or? Yeah, yes, you betcha. Okay. I can, I can send out a list of everyone that we have seen um, to everyone in the group and also um, just emails of everyone that participates for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. And is Wonderful. that including presenters, Crystal, or just basically people who participate in the group? Uh, presenters would be great, and as well. Perfect. Yes, you betcha. I can get that information over to you and anyone that who requests it. I don't typically send out one of the invites to everybody, just in case there are people who don't want to, but per request when people do, I have no problem at all sharing that information. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Well, have a great day. Okay, Thank you, ladies. Bye. See everybody next month. Bye.